I just finished up a few really big videos um, last week. Uh, I did a what's in my bag video and a tips and tricks video for drafts. Both kind of just went into a ton of detail. So I ended up just taking the weekend off, just needed just just recharge a little bit. And then uh, I'm coming back to work and I realized everything is just a giant mess, like business admin side. So today is a reset day, but also a fun project day. So what that means is uh, I, I need to go through all of the admin stuff, the typical stuff. I, I've talked about that before. It's, it's not interesting. Um, so I need to do all that. I want to uh, also put together a keyboard. I, I have had a keyboard that I'm super excited to put together, like sitting in the corner that I just want to do. Uh, so I want to do that today and kind of get all that done. This video is sponsored by Incogni. Some astute viewers noticed in my last video, the drafts tips and tricks video that I am using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro again. Uh, and it's for one specific reason. I am working on a podcast project, an announcement to come later. I literally have no details to give you right now. Uh, but I am working on a podcast project. We recorded episode one and I'm editing the first few episodes. Uh, and I like to use the app Ferrite for editing podcasts. It's uh, an app I've talked about before, but just like the quick rundown. It's an audio editor that's designed to be a podcast editor. A lot of audio editors that are out there are not meant for podcast editing. They're meant for music or maybe voiceover or something like that. But this was literally designed from the ground up to be a podcast editor. So that's why I really like it, but it's not on the Mac. It's only on the iPad. I've been using the iPad Air and I've really liked using the iPad Air, but it's small. It, it, it's a small screen and that's what I liked it for was for really focused work. But I mentioned in those videos that for creative tasks, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, this guy, that it really shines there because you have that bigger canvas. And Ferret is a prime example of that. So uh, while editing a podcast, I have four audio tracks. I, I ended up getting rid of one because it's the call track and I use that to sync the other three tracks up. But even with three audio tracks, it's the iPad Air just isn't big enough to see all of those tracks all at once. You have to scroll back and forth. It, it, it's just annoying. Yes, you can make the, the, the timeline, the waveform smaller in Ferrite, but personally i like them all blown up i like to see like the maximum waveforms it makes things a lot easier to edit so that is kind of why i switched back to the 12.9 inch ipad pro i still really really like the ipad air i'm like really torn between the two right now but right now i'm using the 12.9 inch ipad pro i know i said i'd make it to wwdc but hey it's just a couple weeks away i i, I made it really really close but um yeah that's why i'm back on the 12.9 inch ipad Pro for right now. So one of my new favorite iPad accessories is this guy right here. It's this little, almost looks like the Green Lantern ring in Brightest Day and Blackest Night. I actually don't remember how the rest of it goes. But anyways, uh, it's, it's not the Green Lantern ring. It is this little puck and that has five buttons on it. It's a media playback controller. It's a, it's a Bluetooth device, so pairs to iPad, iPhone, whatever, and controls media playback via your hardware button. So you have play, pause, skip, back, and volume up and down. And the reason why I like this is because I really like har physical hardware media playback controls. So, you know, like the function row on a Mac or something like that. But the iPads never got that, even with the Magic Keyboard and stuff like that. And even my, my fancy keyboard doesn't, doesn't have that here. So I'm using this guy right here. It's a, from Satechi, uh, media button. Literally nothing special. I found this on their website. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But you know, if I hit play, it'll play music. Pause. Probably have to take that out because uh, you know, I'll get a copyright strike. But there was music that was playing there. You know, I could skip forward, volume up, volume down. You can kind of see the, the, the thing right there. Pretty cool. I don't know, I, I just really like this. It's it's a really nice device if you're somebody like me that works at a desk with an iPad and you're listening to music all day and stuff and you want physical media playback controls, check this out. It's, it's totally worth it. 
This video is sponsored by Incogni. Incogni is a service you can use to get your personal data off the internet. When you're on the internet, you buying something, reading something, signing up for a newsletter, whatever, your personal data is being gathered and sold off to data brokers, even without you knowing. But you actually have the right to request for that data to be deleted. Now, if you were to do this manually, you know, go around to all of these data brokers and say, hey, I want my data deleted from your service, it would take you years. Incogni helps protect your privacy. They go through all of these data brokers looking for your personal information. Then they reach out on your behalf and request that the information be deleted. And this happens automatically in the background. Data brokers can get your personal information in a lot of different ways. Like I mentioned, things as simple as signing up for a newsletter, but also purchasing items from the internet, or even just searching for something, that all that information is gathered up into a profile on you. All you have to do to make sure this data is gone is sign up for an account and give them permission to delete this data on your behalf. The rest happens in the background. You don't see a thing and you don't have to do a thing, which is amazing. Check out Incogni today and get your personal information secured. The first 100 people to use the code in the description below will get 20% off Incogni. All right, so all the admin tasks are done. Um, uh, honestly, it actually wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was. A lot of the email I got was just spam or like just stuff that I just didn't even need to deal with. So it really actually wasn't, wasn't that bad at all. But I am moving on to the fun project for the day. So I am excited because I'm found, I saw this keyboard on Reddit. It's this wooden keyboard base. It's a 65% layout keyboard. It's called the DZ65. I'm just gonna put links to everything that I built on this keyboard in the description below, along with that Satechi Media uh, button. Um, but what this keyboard is, it just, it looks beautiful. Now, disclaimer, I am, not a expert at building mechanical keyboards. I've only built one other keyboard. It was that one back there. Um, and it turned out fine, it works. So I think that's the important thing. But let's open up the box. I'll show you guys what I got here. A little unboxing. I, I never do unboxings on this channel, but I figured because it's all came in one box. I ordered it all from the same site uh, that it would be good. So first up are the switches. These are the Kali Jade Clicky switches. Is that enough? Hopefully that's enough. It doesn't look, I, I don't know, we'll see. These are supposed to like require a ton of force, make a loud sound, totally 100% right up my alley. Okay, so there's that. There's the switches. This is the, oh, this is the wrist mat. I got the matching wrist mat. It wasn't that much more, but you can kind of see like that's the wood. I'm just gonna set this over here because we do not need this right now to build the keyboard. I believe this is the, this is light. This is probably the board. Ah, okay, so the inserts for you know the sound dampening and and making it sound nice and stuff like that we'll go over that in a bit oh no i was wrong this is the board right here as you can kind of see i'll put in some fancy b-roll too once it's all put together but um this is the board i absolutely love this solid wood i think this is walnut if i remember correctly uh didn't write that part down but anyways um, it looks really nice. I'm very, very excited about this. Uh, screws and all that stuff. Okay, so put that right there. Don't want to lose those screws, so I'll put it in the board. Uh, stabilizers for like space bars and stuff like that. Um, I've never put these in before because uh, GMMK Pro came with all that stuff put in, so that'll be interesting. This whole thing is a learning experience for me, so I may mess this up. Who knows? This may be a very, very expensive mistake. This is the board itself. So you can kind of see that's the board with all the switches and stuff that are going in it. I'm gonna put this back in here so I don't mess that up. And then, I don't know what this is. What else did I order? Did I order keycaps? I hope not, because these are, I already have a keycap set I'm gonna use for this. I did order keycaps, oopsies. I totally forgot I ordered keycaps for this keyboard. 
Um, well... We'll save these for another time. Because, uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna set these down here. Because the keycaps I am gonna use, I'm very excited about these. They are these uh, keycaps that are meant to look like old school Mac key keyboards. Uh, so they have that old school Mac keyboard font. Uh, very excited about these. So these are the ones that I'm going to use. Totally forgot I ordered keycaps for this keyboard. I already had these, why did I do? Whatever, I don't, I don't even know what I was thinking. Anyways, let's put together a keyboard. It's a couple days later. Uh, I wanted to spend some time with the keyboard, but it's completely finished. I've been using it for three days now, and I am really happy with the way it turned out. I love this wood base, and this is real wood. It's, I believe it's walnut. Uh, I should have wrote that down, but I don't, I, I'm, I'm like 90% sure it's walnut. Uh, the keycaps look amazing. Like I said, they are the old school Mac style keycaps. I just think like the wood, Plus those keycaps give it like this kind of like nice retro computing look. Overall, just super happy with the way this keyboard turned out. I did do a bit of customization of it though. Uh, obviously you could see things like the keycaps where I replaced the escape key with the rainbow Apple logo and then the home page up, page down and end buttons I replaced with a hello classic Mac, uh, iPod and iPhone uh, keycaps. And what I did is there is a piece of software called Via and basically it's just open source software that allows you to customize firmware for custom mechanical keyboards. So you can actually uh, open up the firmware essentially and use a GUI and change out what different keys do. So I customized a few different things. So like the, um, iPod and home, uh, iPhone button, these are volume up and volume down. Uh, my other keyboard has a knob for controlling volume and then you could press it down to mute. I really wanted the, I really wanted some sort of volume control on this keyboard. Uh, and then I replaced the caps lock key cause caps lock is like the worst key ever. Like it, it should not, I hate, I hate caps lock so much. So I don't use it on any keyboard. So I made it play pause. Uh, so I can hit that and it'll do play pause. And then I replaced the Hello and Mac uh, keys, these two right here, they actually trigger macros. So what these do is when, when pressed, essentially it's pressing multiple keys. So there is a macro that you can write in there and you assign the macro key to these keys. And what this does is it triggers, uh, when I press the Hello button, it triggers Command plus F14 and then the classic Mac, when I press that, it, command, it triggers Command plus F15. And what I did is in two apps that I use every day, Things and Drafts, uh, on the Mac, they have a quick entry option that you can just press a system-wide global keyboard shortcut and it'll just trigger those quick entry actions. Uh, they both have it, it's, they're both really nice, uh, but I always had to have like some like 
off the wall key combination. So I didn't like interfere with any like, you know, application level shortcuts. Well, nothing is taking advantage of F14 and F15 in any applications I use. So I am good to use com those those commands right there. So that's what these these buttons do. Uh, and I'm really happy with that. I'm overall, I'm really happy with the way this keyboard turned out. Um, it does have RGB, which I hate. I absolutely hate RGB. So again, you have to use that via app uh, and you basically just sign assign an RGB toggle to a button save it, load up the firmware, turn it off, and then you can replace that button in the future if you never want RGB. So the keycaps I use, like I mentioned, they are the Kali Jade, bo the Box Jade. Uh, so here, I'll do a little, little type test for you. So space bar. That sounds so good. Command key, shift, the useless caps lock key, escape. Anyways, I think this keyboard sounds really good. Um, I'm really happy with the way it looks, the way it feels. The only thing I wish is that there was a bigger option of this board um, because I don't care for the arrow keys being bunched up right next to the modifier keys. I usually, I like some space there and that's just so I can orient my hands without having to look down. This keyboard is a 65% keyboard. It's like a compact keyboard. So everything is smushed together. Uh, so I, I, I do wish they were separated out a bit. Um, one nice touch is where the uh, cable goes. It's got kind of like this gold filling. I, I think that just looks really good. But yeah, overall solid keyboard, super happy with it. Um, yeah, it turned out really great. Uh, if you guys want to see more keyboard videos, let me know. I have some other keyboard stuff I need to build. Uh, plus, I have some like really cool keycaps and stuff showing up. So yeah, let me know. I, I and also like I'm enjoying making these vlog style videos or work with me style videos. So um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about all this stuff. My thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video. If you like it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.